Well, we're joined now by Christina Kilgrove, a biological anthropologist at the University of West Florida. Thanks for joining us. How convinced are you by these conclusions? I remain unconvinced that these data represent the bones of Amelia Earhart. I think Dr. Jans has done a great job with the information at hand in an attempt to go further in solving this case, but I disagree with the conclusion that we should necessarily assume that these bones are Earhart's. Why do you say that? What hesitations do you have? Um, I, I, I think that, that he has tried to correlate these, these measurements very well, um, which is an interesting approach, but to me it's a lot of what ifing. Um, it's essentially gaming out the logical conclusion of a whole lot of different variables. So this isn't a positive identification, as Jantz notes as well in his article. How exactly have they tried to map the information? Um, they've been relying on uh, bone measurements that were taken in the 1940s as the bones are missing. Um, and taking uh, assumed measurements based on pictures and clothing of Amelia Earhart and trying to correlate the data, the bone measurements, with Amelia Earhart's data. What, what do you make of initial studies which identify the bones as, as belonging to a man? Uh, I, I think they could possibly be true. I don't think we can discount the male assessment entirely. Um, there were two different doctors who were skilled in anatomy um, at the time who studied the remains and came to the conclusion that they were male. Um, and as Jans himself notes in the article, the most prudent position here is to consider the bones of an unknown sex. Just briefly, do you think we will ever get a, a defining conclusion to this or not? Uh, unless bones are found, I, I don't think so. And so saying the, these are Earhart until someone can prove otherwise does keep the mystery alive, but from a scientific standpoint, it's a dead end until the bones are found. Christina Kilgrove, thank you very much indeed for your time.